Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part 13 of our .NET full stack series. And in the previous video, we saw like how we can make use of result pattern. And we also saw how we can create a login API. All right. But in the login API, what you saw, right, we are still creating this dummy token just to be sure that we will be replacing it later. Okay. But there was a problem what I have discussed in the last video that whenever there is something failure, right, it always returns as a bad request. Like for example, let's take an instant over here. In my database, I have an email as yshashi30 at the gmail.com with this password as string. Now, if you go here, if I try to do the API call, and this is what you see, right? I'm getting uh, the message as user not found, but my error code is 400, which is bad request. Okay. I want to change this to 404 because I should get the appropriate error code for the error messages, whatever I have. For example, it is user not found. So it should be 404. So to fix this, right? What we could have done here, we could have added one more check here by saying that response dot error message no not the error message we can say uh, error dot we have a code right so if the error code is auth error no not that so we can put here that we have an error type constant so we can say error type constant dot not found if this is the case so what you should do you should say that result dot not found and we can send the response now again i will have to add one more if condition with the same check and this time i will say response dot error code if my error code is a validation error, then please return this. Okay. Or else there is a success all the time. And now if I save the changes and let me restart the application. All right. And now if I go back here on this UI and if I try to click on execute now, so this time, can you see I'm getting the proper error code, which is 404. Okay. Let me also test for the password invalid. So let me do the wrong password. And now it should give me the validation error that 400. Yeah, this is what I expected. But the way I am doing it, right, this is not correct because I will have to put up if condition every time. I should try to do some way by which I can reuse my code or there should be some more ideal way which can handle my errors more elegantly. Okay. So to implement that, right, there is a way what I have figured out by making use of a result extension. Okay. So what we can do, right, you can go in our API layer and we can create an extension here and we can give the name to this as result extension. Okay. And hit enter. And what this result extension will do. So this is extension. So let me make this class as static and inside this, I will have few static methods. So the first static method will be public static. I result of two action result. No, I will make this as two HTTP response. Okay. Two HTTP response. So what this does, right? So this will take this result, what you have. So this dot result, let me first add this as an input on the top. Yeah. So what this will do, right? This will take your result and this will check for if your result is failure. So not, we are not checking for failure. We are checking for success. If the result is success, then what this should do, this will say, okay, result of okay. And it will send the result back. Okay. If there is any error, right, then we will add that inside this else block. Okay. And we will try to map my error here, map the error over here. Okay. Now, what is the next thing I have to do? So this is only for your result dot success, but what if my result has a value as well? So for that, let me again, copy this and let me just go just below here. And this time this will be result with a generic type, which is T. Okay. And this, I can take it from here. So this will be a T so that we can pass the T result. All right. So now inside that, what we will do, right? If again, this is success. So what this should do, this should again, take result. Okay. Of result from here or else I will have to map an error. So let me create a private method just below this, which will have a name private static. And this is I result. Okay. This is I result of map error response. And one thing to note here that I will pass two things inside this. The first thing I'll pass the error. And the second thing I will pass this as my result. Okay. And now what I'll do inside this, I will create my switch expression. Okay. So if you see, I'm getting this help from this chat GPT. So I can convert this into a switch expression. So let me convert this into a switch expression. And now if you see, let me remove, which is not required for us. If you remember, right, if the error type is forbidden, then you can directly return something called as forbid. You don't need to pass your result. And for unauthorized as well, you don't need to pass the result. It will directly give you 401 status code. All right. So now next thing I need to pass it right for the internal server error, what we can do, right? 
we can return a problem and in this problem we can give the detail okay so detail can be passed as error dot message all right and the next thing we can pass here the status code so the status code can be passed like this okay so you just saw that option right status code where we can send that directly as 500 okay and this is how you will map all your errors from here so now what happens right so whenever there is any error what you will do you will directly say return from here and then you will say map error response correct so you can pass in your map dot uh, result dot error and you can pass your result from there okay same thing i will do it here as well return map error response and then save the changes now once this is done right you can take a glance of this method how this looks like okay so you have two things here two http response conversion one for the normal result and one for the result with value okay with the generic type t and then this is how your map error response does so once you have this extension method so now what you can do you head over to your controller and inside this controller of our auth here you don't have to do all this logic now what you can do right you can directly take your response so you get your response from the api and what you can do you can just say return response dot to http response that's it okay same thing you can do it here as well i can remove all this from here now and this will become my one liner you can again say response dot to http response all right and now you just have to say return that's it i'm sorry i missed that return and you can save the changes see how clean your controller become it's just a two liner one you fetch and one you just return the response and now what will happen right let me put up a debug point and let's see what is happening here so let me have a debug point here for the login and let me go back here and first of all what i always do i try to build my project just to see if there is everything is correct so let me close this let me stop the debugger and let me do a dotnet build so the build is success and now i'll go and run the application so after running the application i will again go and use this one uh, the error response what i have so this time the password is incorrect so i click on execute okay i can go on my debugger here so can you see my response is back okay so if you see the response right the failure is true and the success is false and in this error i have this code and message okay which is for invalid password so let me go inside that what will happen right it will come to this to response and it will check for that if my status is success so it will say no this is false so it will go to the map error okay and now if i go in the map error response so what it does right based on what is your error code so for example for us the error code is validation error so it will come to this guy validation error and now this will return the result of a bad request so let me just go on the switch case inside that it will go for the first one and this is how it will return so now if you see the result i'm getting this 400 bad request but if i do the password correct and if my email is incorrect which is 301 and let me show you we i don't have any 301 here so now let's go back and click on execute so it will do the same thing again let me go inside this again the success is false and it will come to the map error and this time the error is not found error okay so now let's go back again where it goes so it comes here and this time it will come on this line number 38 which is not found and if i click this again and now i'm getting 404 and that's how you are able to handle your result in a very effective way so you don't need to explicitly write all your if conditions in the controller you can create a extension method like this what i did for two http response and it will take your result which is coming from the service and it will convert it into a appropriate result object okay and this is what i wanted to show you in this video i hope you find this helpful and interesting as well because i don't know if there is any other content out there who is explaining you in such way all right so if you have never seen such thing then do let me know in the comment section as well because i have never found something like that so i was just trying to explore and found out this way to do this and i hope this will gonna help you as well so that's it from this today's video where we saw how we can correct the problem of our result pattern and now this controller can directly return the correct 
result object all right and if you have any question related to this topic then do let me know in the comment section even if you have no doubt but you have any feedback to give then please also mention them in the comment again for the for the source code what you can do you can head over to this link buymeacoffee.com over here i will be providing this link in the description box so you can head over there click on that link and you can go ahead and purchase this particular project so what you will get you will get the complete project thing and if you face any issue in setup so i will be also there to help you guys with that all right so that's it from today i will see you guys in the next video where we will discuss about how do we handle validation in our clean architecture and trust me guys the next video is going to be more interesting because there is a package fluent validation and it is one of the most popular package out there so i will help you that how we can configure that package and we can start using it in our project all right so until next time keep learning keep coding bye bye